you guys heard uh, how we manifest those three things that uh, um, Samir had set up into the, the PC side that Justin talked about, how it manifests itself in, this, in the AI side. So that's the, you know, um, heavily Dell on the PC side, I'll talk about Dell on the infrastructure side, and then the, the, the big workload that everybody's talking about is the AI side, that's why we wanted to talk about it. Um, I think there's a lot of components that you probably already know within the uh, infrastructure side. When we talk infrastructure, we're talking storage servers, data protection, networking, HCI, and AI ops. I just want to give you the perspective of when Dell, Dell's business, the um, modern work, workspace that Justin talked about, the workspace is the PC side, the modern modern data center side is, is, is all of these things, and there's the AI side. In fact, Dell has a strategy that we use to talk to our customers about. It's called, um, it's called the, the DTA, the Dell Technology Advantage, and it's, it's those three components with security across all three and sustainability across all three. Um, so one of the important things that not a lot of folks know about when it comes to the infrastructure side of the house um, is we actually have a separate organization, development organization on the infrastructure side of the house that focuses 100% solely on creating consistency. So we've heard from a majority of our customers that there's just too much tool sprawl and, and all of that. So how can I get down to one set of capabilities that helps me manage everything that I own? Of course, hopefully if it's a Dell uh, com component, but whether it be MFA, single sign-on or whatnot, you only have to go to one solution to implement to, in order to get that across the entire Dell portfolio. The other thing that is um, brand new news, which was announced at Dell Tech World last week was we have gone to this model where we're ensuring that in all of our appliance solutions, our server solutions, et cetera, we have a consistent operating system. So that might sound like eh, whatever, but I mean, from a security side, the, the, the customer knows that what they get on one is the same on, on, all, on everything. So what do they have to do is very consistent across their entire, their entire platform. And I think that's, that's pretty great and something we've been striving to do for at least three years that, that I've been working on the security side of things. Here. Um, so what I'll talk about, and this gets back to a little bit of the zero trust stuff that you had asked about before. I don't. I'm, we're still thinking about how to answer the question on non-Dell components, but <clears throat> what I've done here is talked about the consistent set of capabilities that we deliver on all of our solutions, including with our partners to, for example, reduce the attack service. So our servers. You know, they have system lockdown, they have uh, signed firmware updates, they have dynamic USB uh, components. These are all the things that we try to do to reduce the attack surface on the server, server side. On the networking side, taking advantage of cryptography, taking advantage of secure authentication. Like a lot of this stuff is, is kind of known, but, but we go above and beyond to think about if the strategy that Dell uses internally is this same reduce the attack surface, detect and response. So it's catch them coming in, find the threats and then, and then get, get the business back to operational. We try to make sure that from a development standpoint in each of our solutions in, that we're uh, selling to customers, we're making sure that they have the capabilities that they need to do, to do all of them. And we're leveraging it both with our partners and with our services, right, to make sure it, it all goes according to plan. On the infrastructure side, um, from the detection response side of things, right, same kind of thing you heard. Um, uh, Justin talking about iDRAC, so iDRAC on the server side, BIOS live scanning to make sure that what we are look constantly looking for for changes. Anytime the chassis gets gets um, penetrated, we can actually send out notifications, let people know that something has happened. So not just you know the cybersecurity, but also the physical security of the devices and all that stuff. We're trying to take all of that into account to make sure that that we're catching as much as much as we can. And the same thing on the on the um, recovery side, right? And especially the mainframe. Sometimes it gets a little bit forgotten that Dell deals with with mainframe a lot as well. So whether it's the checking uh, and, and make ensuring you've got valid recovery uh, points to recover from, uh, like we do with Index Engines, Rocketsoft is also scanning scanning information and data before recovery, as well as. Uh, Maintegrity, who all does that on the mainframe side. So we try to, and in fact, on the index engine side, from a recovery standpoint, we've recently announced last week as well, not only doing the scanning in the data protection side of things, so you, you've got your backup, we scan the backup, make sure it's clean, 
also leveraging index engine on the primary storage side, so scanning snapshots and that sort of thing. So if, you, if you're trying to catch the threat early, doing it on the primary side and being able to recover quickly from those snaps on the primary side is definitely very beneficial. And, and, and that's where we're, we're seeing the industry as well as some of the things that we're doing. Uh, Lars from Norway here. Yeah, <clears throat> hey Lars. Uh, so that means that if you have a, a data protection system that is not on the list, which is only a few old ones, more or less. Uh, I saw the list of supported systems, but now that you can scan the uh, on the primary storage, you don't uh, have to rely on uh, having one of those old systems. Yeah, it kind of. I think we have this conversation internally a lot, right? Because the customer we're sure is going to ask, "Well, where should I do it?" Right? Or, or what's the smartest thing to do? And it's really trying to let the customer decide, right? So if you're a belts and suspenders company, you probably might want to try both, right? <laughs> but um, you always want to catch it as early as possible and doing it on the primary storage is definitely beneficial as well. That said, if you have a vault or you don't have a vault kind of situation with, with the Dell solution, you can then also leverage the fact that we do it, we, we, we scan the data there too. And we've also come across a number of our customers who put you know, all of their data in a cyber in a cyber vault, that gets a little unwieldy when you try to recover all your data. What does that mean, right? So now it's it's up to maybe you've got some business critical data that you want to recover like near instant. You can scan and be confident that that's going to recover, and you can maybe put your next tier down in the vault without putting everything in the vault. But it actually cleans up the scanning times and that sort of thing, and, and the manipulation you can do in the vault vis-a-vis -vis on the primary storage side. Yeah. Is that helpful? Uh, yeah. Uh, will you support um, more systems uh, as time comes on? So right now it's on PowerStore, our PowerStore uh, solution. On our HCI solution and um, UDS solutions, we use other uh, capabilities. One is uh, Progress and Flowmon. I forget who the other, the other one is. We're doing, we're doing that across the primary storage side and the data protection side. I don't know how much further we're going to expand that uh, versus other security capabilities we're going to build into the system. Yeah, I was mainly thinking of uh, data protection systems. There are some uh, systems that are, uh, have a gained a lot of traction in the last uh, 10 years that are not on the list. Uh, oh. And I'm wondering... Many customers I migrated to them. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm sure we're in the process of testing a, a bunch of them. I'm just not quite sure kind of the order of progression that we might, might do. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So as a way, this is in the data protection space, as a way to see it to, to come full circle, is if you look at um, our data protection solution, right? When we talk to customers and we go and, and we're having conversations with them, we do put them in those three buckets, reduce the attack surface, detect and respond and recover. And you might say, well, protection, that's all about recovery. Well, we don't think of it that way, right? We kind of turn the lens around and we say, from a deployment standpoint, you want to be able to secure your devices um, properly. So what do you do from an MFA standpoint? What do you do from a rules-based access standpoint? What do you do from an uh, uh, encryption standpoint? Making sure that all of those things are in place is part of best practices. And then from a detection standpoint, we, we have obviously the detection with index engines to find the threats uh, that, that, are, that have come through. But also, as Adam just pointed out, um, we have done a relationship with CrowdStrike that we announced uh, earlier in the year, where they, we found over 70 different types of attacks that can get through within your backup environment. And we can now send them to your SIM and kind of let you know what's happening, not only not only in your regular storage or, or everything else that your CrowdStrike solution might look for, we can also do it in the backup. And then ha leveraging the vault and immutability and the um, isolation that we do, be being able to recover securely. So this is, when we talk to customers, it's not about, about um, what one solution are you gonna fulfill to, to solve each one of those three problems. It's about how does the solutions that you buy from Dell have the ability to solve all of the problems along the way. So we were talking about zero trust. Again, Samir pointed out very well, right? Zero trust really all about the identity component. And the two ways in which Dell can, can bring that together is the Project Fort Zero and the incremental uplift. On the uplift side, 
These are really the capabilities, and I think this answers your, your first question, which is it's not just about what we believe, but it, these are the capabilities that we build into each one of our solution sets to make sure that as you're building a zero trust environment, especially in that brownfield environment, we have to say, hey, I'm building zero trust, but I really only need to buy a server right today to, to fulfill my requirements. Well, you can look at the server side, and, and I always, um, whenever I present this to customers, they say, you're probably in this executive briefing not to hear about every single little thing that Dell does, but maybe you're here to buy servers or you're here to buy storage. Take a look at which one of the capabilities or the, the components that you're trying to buy and kind of zero in on the list. And then when the uh, subject matter expert comes in to talk to you about that particular solution, whether it be storage or servers or networking, you can kind of drill down on some of the capabilities that are built into the system that allow you to continue to build out your zero trust environment or that perimeterless environment uh, for you to keep it to keep it secure. However, also, you know, if you are looking to ha build that enclave that keeps you secure uh, and everything that you put behind it, th the way to do it is through our Project 4.0, which just, just got certified through the, de uh, the Department of Defense. Actually, I have a question uh, about that statement. Yep. Where is the certification process that the DOD uses Certify Dell, their architecture, processes, frameworks, everything is zero trust. Where is the process? Yeah. You guys said we have been certified by the Department of Defense as zero trust. So there's no stamp or validation. I, I think... I think well, um, then why, why make the claim? Because that's what the Department of Defense says. It's, it's not a... Uh, maybe certification is the wrong word. Validation is the right word. So what we did was the Department of Defense built a zero trust architecture mm -hmm. that you needed to follow. If you're going to be in any type of regulated business, if you're getting federal grants, if you're doing anything, if you're a critical infrastructure organization, they said, you must adhere to this. That's right. So we built to that architecture, mm -hmm. and then we submitted it to them and said, okay, try to break it, right? Okay, but have they validated it? I guess the, yes, they point, have. yes, point, they have. Okay, so what is that process that validates this? I can't take... Uh, we, I, went, we went on site there. We built. Is, we, is there a document from there the no DOD? Document. Yeah, that'd be great. Just because in the in the first part of your presentation, uh, I forget who was speaking, but it was mentioned, we've been certified by the DOD, Department of Defense, zero trust certification, and I'm searching and searching, and I cannot find a single certification validation. Okay, you know that's subjective. There's a checklist. Okay, but. There is no certification, so I just I needed clarity on that. Yeah, it's yeah. driving me crazy. Yeah. I understand, <laughs> Steve. If I might add just something quickly, um, part of this involved you know Im implementing hardware that they could then go work against from you know a pen test and various other security you know controls, validation checks. But um, the these were built and they ran those tests against each of the COAs. So they had vendors they were looking at for COA two on cloud uh, and COA three for on prem infrastructure, and COA three is the one that we were validated against. Okay, that, that's a good detail because I did find that reference you were talking about the different COAs. Yeah, so I mean, holistically, again, what I said was, you know, Samir set it up, the three uh, strategies, we, the, the strategy we use to talk to our customers about making sure that their environment is secure. We tried to bring it to life in each one of our infrastructure side, our uh, endpoint side, and then, and then through our AI side. And I hope, I mean, we got out of it, I think, a lot more questions than the last time we asked. And <clears throat> some of you were here last time, some of you were not, but um, it's very beneficial and we're looking forward to, to the next section.